walk away with new insights, shifts in thinking, and action plans. Her faith in others' ability for transformation, her gentle strength, and excellent cultural competency and communication skills promote the trust and inspiration required for engaging audiences and producing sustained coaching results. Globally recognized, Maryland's experiences or experience includes coaching for the United Nations, the Environmental Protection Agency, as well as local business leaders. Maryland steps into leadership regularly, including seven years on the global board of ICF, followed by the um, Association of Coach Training Organizations Board and many other organizations and situations. So please join me in welcoming Marilyn. Thank you so much for the warm Chicago welcome and for your investment in your own professional development. Um, and I'm so excited to be here with you. And, and Murray, thank you for your invitation. When Murray and I first were talking about this, it was like, well, what should I talk about? Cultural is one of my favorite topics, but we're doing that in June. And so my other two are leadership and centering. And so because we have two hours together, you're going to get both. <laughs> so the leadership is the main portion, but we're going to start with just a little bit of centering and then the leadership for an hour, and then the final will be a coaching demo. So I'm going to be coaching someone up here. And so be thinking about which one of you would like 20, 30 minutes of coaching with me at the end of our program today. So I look forward to that. And the final piece will be sharing some resources with you and doing the drawing, which, which you've heard about. So make sure you have your business card in. It will be a gift certificate for $200 off. Um, coaching or a program with me. In order for us all to be fully present with each other this evening, I invite you to turn over one of your papers and just download your brain. So all you know, the Chicago traffic, all the things that you've been busy with today, all the things that you're thinking about, grocery lists and things that you have to do afterwards. Just I invite you to write it down on the back of one of the pieces of paper in front of you and let it go for the next two hours. And why I've invited you to download your brain and set all those thoughts aside so that we can all be fully present. We know that's one of the ICF core competencies, right? It's being fully present. And I believe that when we are fully present with each other, that provides that deeper level of connection that we want with our audience or with our coaching clients. Why I use it, why I think it's a great idea to use it. And then we're going to do the centering exercise together. And so I was in Asia Pacific last year for three months, uh, which was a really fabulous experience. And I was speaking on centering. And I was also helping with the coach training program in Bali for two weeks. And we were doing polarity work. And guess what my polarities were? It was from the topic of my presentation. How about that? So I believe that we're just constantly assaulted with one wave after another in, in the sea of change that we live in. And um, in, in the research right now, we know that our brains are bombarded with 40 million bits of information per moment and we can process 40. 11 million to 40 is the ratio. It's really overwhelming. So what do you do when you're assaulted with one wave after another? And I actually was on a Greek island honeymoon cruise when we ran into a tempest. And so my choice was in that tempest to hang on, you know, white knuckled to the railing try and grasp for control, or let go, trust the process, and open up and relax. <coughs> that, and that's my two polarities that I kind of work with my whole life. Am I going to try and grasp on for control, which is good sometimes. You don't want to fall out of the boat in a storm. And sometimes it's good to relax and let go most of the time. <laughs> it's good to relax. So, what we're going to 
going to do then is to practice that relaxing and letting go by physically centering ourselves. Now you can incorporate this with a spiritual practice if you want. So be thinking it, you know, kind of get into that space if, if that's part of what you do already. Mindfulness is a big topic in leadership right now. I practice centering prayer. It's an ancient Christian tradition. I do it in community uh, once a week with about 40 other people, and then I practice it on my own. And that's how I keep this kind of calm, centered, content spirit is through this practice and able to be fully present and focused with my clients and very connected with them. So are you ready? Ready for the practice? Sure. Okay. So you may either sit or stand for that. I recommend if you've been sitting all day and you're able to, to stand. Is uh, based on an exercise that Doug Silsby has in his work on presence space coaching. So yeah, I see people already doing it. You have your feet firmly planted on the floor, whether you're sitting or standing. If you're sitting, you also have your bottom firmly planted in the seat. So um, now I invite you to close your eyes and to experience some deep breaths, so deep diaphragmatic breathing. If your hands were on your belly, you could be moving them in and out by your breath, by your slow, deep breaths. So while you continue to do that deep diaphragmatic breathing, I invite you to shift your body a little to the left and experience that space. Come back to center. Experience what it's like to be at center. Shift your body slightly to the right. Experience that space. Come back to center. Shift your body slightly forward. Experience that space. Come back to center. And as you shift your body slightly back, and you're experiencing that space, some people like to imagine a big fat dinosaur tail extending from the back of your body and it's also in touch with the ground, firmly in touch with the ground. And within that dinosaur tail represents all of your gifts and abilities and experiences that have gotten you to this point in your life and will be with you as you move forward. Come back to center. Experience what that space is like at center. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. Even though I couldn't see where I was actually standing, I could feel some difference, mm -hmm. shifting right and left especially. Mm -hmm. um, it's an interesting metaphor, dinosaur tail, so I tried it out. <laughs> <laughs> it the leaning forward felt like it had a pointer finger with it, <coughs> like I was leaning over people. Ah, interesting, thank you. The other ones, there was an emotional experience, but it's difficult to put into words. Okay. Anything else you want to say about that, Betty? Um, well, I noticed the leaning forward felt like it had a pointer finger with it. Mm. <coughs> like I was leaning over people. Ah, interesting. Thank you. The other ones, there was emotional experience, but it's difficult to put into words. Okay. It was almost colors. Mm -hmm. Uh, when we did the right to left, I was kind of playing the aha connection where if I were off center for too long, it would become painful. So it makes sense to be in the center. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Like it was fine to maintain for a while. But uh-huh. then, you know, if you were standing like that for the whole day, it would really not feel good. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. So that, you know, it's a good metaphor to remember, isn't right. it? That if we feel like we're being pulled off center, it's it's going to kind of wear us out, either an eye or a mind or our spirit. Mm-hmm. That's, I used this with one of my UN clients this last week. He said, I said, what do you want to get out of the coaching session today? And he said, well, you know what we were talking about last time, where I feel like, you know, sometimes I kind of take things too personally when people say things to me, and then they can tell by my facial expression, which is not a poker face, that I'm really, you know, upset and not happy, and I don't like them. <laughs> I said, I want to work on that. <laughs> and. Uh, you know, he had some sensitivity, which I find a lot with, with leaders. It's like if people find out who I really am, they're going to think I shouldn't be in this position. And so we, this getting back to center and the dinosaur <coughs> thing he loved, you know, that I can keep that as a focus of um, I'm not just who people think I am, but I am all these gifts and experiences as well. So it's kind of a fun thing. And... Uh, just two other things of how this works for me is that when I was in Bali in the meditation room twice a day for the, the two-week coach training program, I carried that community with me from Kansas City. They were there with me in my spirit. And so when I say to clients that I'm working with, it's not just our emails and our, our meetings that I'm with you. You're with me all the time. Uh, and I and I really experienced that. So it is that deeper sense of connection that uh, that helps us get to that master level of coaching when we're at that deeper connection. And the idea of relaxing and letting go. The three months in Asia Pacific started with, hey, there's an RFP out to present at the Asia Pacific Coaching Conference in Korea. And one of my daughters lives in Korea. It's like, oh, I think I can apply for that and see what happens. Yes, and I got it. And that was mid-October. And then my daughter, Amelia, who lives in Korea, said, Mom, while I'm off in the summer from um, the school where she works, I'd love for you to meet me in Bali in mid-July. And I said, well, that sounds like fun, but what would I do from mid-July in Bali to (coughs) mid-October? And it just... I just kind of relaxed and let go, and the invitations came. Places to stay, presentations to make, you know, coaching, training, and speaking for three months in Asia Pacific. So cool things can happen when you practice this. It made a big impact on my business. All right, so we're going to close out of this one. And move to the next. We're moving into leadership, unless you have any other questions or comments about centering. All right. Yes. So, do you do you do the same processors, and then what? How how do you do? How do you become more present? You said you become more present. Mm-hmm. So, can you describe that a little bit? Yeah. Sure. Did everybody hear Marie's question? Yeah. Okay. So uh, part of it is, it's not just for the coaching sessions, but it's a part of my life. So the weekly community, and then I I do that waking up and when I go to bed. Um, But also to prepare for a coaching session, especially if I'm flying in from being out out in traffic and things like you all were this evening, to to prepare for a coaching session. And then like I, I gave this example with the UN client, um, when he said what he wanted to work on, I'll say, oh, well, I have something that I could do with you. Are you, you know, it's, it's a centering practice. Do you want to try it out with me? Of course, you know, if you're trying out something with a client, you have to have their permission, right? You have to explain a little bit about it and get their permission. And, um, but I find that they love it, and it's something that they start incorporating because people will say, well, I'm, I'm too busy to go to the gym. I mean, these UN leaders that are posted around the world, you know, and I heard from ser- several of you before we started that you work with not-for-profit leaders. So they're there because this is their calling. This is, the, you know, what they're passionate about. And if 
they could be working 24 hours a day on it. And sometimes they almost do. And then they're going to burn out and no one's going to be benefited from it. Um, but even just taking a minute, an hour, to do the centering, no one can say, I don't have time to do a minute. And you could do it in a minute. So how to step into your power as a leader with your clients company and community, mastering three energizing steps to creating impactful and influential leadership. So this is, again, like centering, something that you can do anytime, anywhere. And if you think about leaders, and we're not going to be getting into politics tonight, but some leaders that you can think of you do see them stepping up effectively into leadership, whether they have the title or not. If you think about some meetings that you've been in, it might be someone without the title or the position of leadership that's really the one that's stepping up and keeping things going in a very effective way. And some people who have that title or position, you wish they didn't because they don't seem to be doing it very effectively, right? So the idea is anybody can do this anytime anywhere. So our three steps today are the power of purpose, getting up on the balcony, and managing self. And these three principles are utilized by the Kansas Leadership Center, which I've worked with for a number of years. But they were inspired by um, Harvard Kennedy School, Marty Linsky, adaptive leadership. So. I invite you to use me and see me as a resource on this journey. And these, like coaching, people have said coaching really is not rocket science. This isn't rocket science. You may already be using some of this in your work. But you'll come away with, with some different fun things to do with these three energizing steps. Okay, so the power of purpose, I'm going to invite you to meet Jane. <laughs> and Jane is a client that I worked with for six months. And as you can see in this picture, she started out ready to tear out her hair and or scream. Okay, so let's, I'm actually going to channel Jane <laughs> from Kansas City. I brought her with me, so hey, Jane. Yeah. Marilyn, I'm so glad that I have this chance to work with you as a coach because I have this direct report, Susan, who is driving me crazy. And I, you know, am someone that really values a harmonious workplace and and I really like to invest in my people, and I've tried to do this, but I think I just made a hiring mistake with Susan because the people in her area, they're, they're not smiling, they're not happy. I'm starting to hear complaints from our clients out in the community um, that she's not being respectful, that she's not getting the work done on time. The people in her area, <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. Okay. I'll sit close. The people in her area uh, are coming to me because they're afraid to go with her, to her with any concerns. And even when they come to me, they're afraid of retribution, that she's going to seek revenge because it's leaked out that they've come to talk with me. So that is huge. And I, that's what I need the most help with. But in the midst of all this, just for you to understand it, also at home, we're going through some remodeling. We have a new copy, so things are chaotic there. And this position I have in the community, you've probably been reading about it in the newspaper, is a hot mess. And um, I've got to decide you know, what my role is there, how long I want to stay involved, and, and that's kind of weighing on me too. So that's what's going on with me. So what are you going to do to help me, Coach? <laughs> Okay, so that's Jane. Back to being Marilyn. 
So Jane, we're just, you know, this is our first session. Thanks for sharing all that with me. I hear you really do have a lot on your plate in three areas, at home, in the community, and in the workplace. And what you've said is you want to start with what's going on at work. That's what's weighing on you the most, is this issue with Susan. So I, I want to ask you, just so I can have kind of the overall picture of things, what what is your purpose? Well, this is something that I'm really fortunate, um, is that my, my life purpose, my life work, and I'm getting towards close to retirement, has been to give a voice to people who don't have a voice. And so that's, you know, my purpose, my driving force. And so, Jane, what is your organization's purpose? How does that fit with your organization's purpose? Well, again, I'm really fortunate in that the organization is about coordinating efforts in the community and supports me in making sure this community of people that don't have a voice have a voice. So I'm very supportive in this organization. And you know, just thinking about it and you're asking that question, I'm feeling a little calmer because that, that's very positive. Susan is a, is a piece of what's going on that's driving me crazy. These other things, you know, kind of disrupted my life right now, but I appreciate you asking those questions. You're going to have the opportunity now to get into pairs, and take turns sharing your leadership challenge with each other. So five minutes each. Here's my leadership challenge. The person in the coach, that's the client role, the person in the coach role will ask the purpose question. So what is your purpose? What is your organization's purpose? So listen without attempting to solve the partner's challenge, and of course, with the agreement of confidentiality, and just notice, just notice what happens. And then we're gonna go back and debrief and talk about what you noticed. So five minutes, first round, five minutes, the second round. So, what did you notice? Let's, let's start with the people who were round one. Uh, in your, well, either round. What did you notice? When you ask what's your purpose, I think it's easy for people to interpret that as their business purpose. Okay. And then when you ask them what's your purpose as a being on the planet, it's an entirely different question. Yeah. Great. So which one did you go with? In your well, what the re first response was, this is my purpose as a, as a leader. Uh -huh. And then I asked, okay, that's fine in the business world, but you as a person, what's your purpose? Yes. I love seeing coaches at work. The energy in the room. Yeah. So fun. Yeah. We saw some great listening. It looked like really good connections, people being fully present. So what did you notice? Let's let's start with the people who were around one. Uh, in your well, either round. What did you notice? Uh, the purpose question when when I was asked it's uh but, well, first, uh, I find it incredibly hard, and I, I think a lot of people would find it incredibly hard to define their purpose in life. Like, well, what, what is what they're here for, what they feel they're here for. So, when you made to do that, and um, you mentioned that it's not something people don't think about a lot. I feel like I think about it all the time, but never talk about it. Just literally speaking words, even if I myself, sort of started to solidify it more. And just thinking about it. If you speak it and say it, it starts to come clearer. Beautiful. Thank you. And and we're all at different places tonight. So I came into the coaching field in '98 and went through the training in '99. And that's you know part of most coach training right. is identifying your own purpose and then helping clients identify theirs. And I realize you're starting to explore. So it may not be as familiar to you yet. So that's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. 
Yeah. Anyone else? What did you notice, Suze? Um, I noticed when I started to answer the organization purpose about my own company and my own coaching, it was very aligned. But when I was talking about the other organizational offers I'm getting in terms of contracts, they are not all aligned. Ah. <laughs> so that making my decisions more clear as to which clients I should take or turn away. Beautiful. So providing clarity in your decisions when it's based mm -hmm. on your purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Fabulous. Anyone else to share? Yes. Betty. Well, I've been somewhat in the position of your friend Jane, um, and uh, life's been really complex the last couple of years for me, and um, it really, really helped to have, and I did not revert to the life purpose stuff that I've done in the past. I just started from right here where I am, and it was very calming to see how what I've accomplished through this intricacy is is what I really want to do. Beautiful. It doesn't matter that it's very, very hard. It matters that I'm doing what I want to do. Calming and focused. Satisfying, those are all words that I've heard mm -hmm. this evening, and really powerful words. And uh, Betty, I'm guessing that you and Jane are not, not might not be the only ones that have That's right. been in that <laughs> position. <laughs> so, that's when we look at some of the benefits. It is this energizing, that feeling of satisfaction, energy, calmness. Focusing on the light at the end of the tunnel. So it's not just about whatever the challenge is in front of me right now. It puts it into a bigger perspective. And it's like, oh, you know, when I look at it that way, there is some hope. There is some light there. And also, it can reduce reactivity. So that Jane and Susan were in this place of, of conflict. And, uh, and... Jane was noticing she was very reactive around Susan, and that was the, the feeling of wanting to scream. And when you put things into the bigger perspective, then that reduces that. Okay. Did I miss anything? Anybody else have anything to add?
So I don't think that's crazy. I think it's magic, and it's working, and it's really helpful for me to get up and, and look at different interpretations. So I decided what I need to do with Susan is, because I think, you know, I'm taking responsibility. You know, whose work is it? What's my part of the mess? I think it was a bad hiring decision on my part. But, you know, I always want to give people the benefit of the doubt, try to make things work, is I want to hire you to come in and do a team training with the team on, you know, how to, everybody can get along better and work better for that common good, and then everything will be okay. Okay, Jane, well, I, I appreciate that that you are using this technique, that's great, and in different circumstances, and it's working for you, and that you are taking responsibility for your part of the map. So part of what we do remember in getting up on the balcony is to look at different perspectives. So what, what do you think might be Susan's perspective? We've talked some about the team's perspective, your perspective, the community's perspective, your client's perspective. What do you think might be going on with Susan, and how might that fit into or not any patterns, and what needs to happen in order to make progress? And of course, as a coach, I would never ask that many questions at one time. <laughs> Well, I, you know, I'm not really sure what Susan's perspective is, except for when I have a conversation with her and say, you know, Susan, you know, I'm getting some complaints, and this is what's going on, and what can we do differently? She'd say, well, what we need to do differently, Jane, is, you know, you have all the information, you have all the experience. If you just download that to me, everything would be fine. Just give me the information, the experience, the contacts that you have, and, and that's all we need to make it successful. Okay, um, but you know, as I'm thinking about it, since you asked me about her perspective, uh, that may or may not be her perspective, it may be just her trying to dump stuff back on me, is that you know, this coaching thing's working pretty well with you, and instead of training, you know, one other possibility for making progress might be for Susan to get some coaching and see how she could, you know, give her an opportunity to develop to, to her potential, and there might be some things that, that she could get out of that. So, you know, instead of you doing a team training, that, that might be another possibility. So with that, I'll invite you to go back into your pairs for another round. You already know each other's leadership challenge, or maybe you've come up with something new that you want to focus on. Take turns asking some of these questions. Take, you know, give, give your partner the invitation to go up on the balcony with you and to look at different interpretations. And you can say, see that I put including cultural. And this was a situation where even though they were the same gender, and I changed different identities, there were some other cultural identities that were different. And, um, and Jane had some assumptions about Susan based on her cultural identities that we needed to, to do some work through while we were up on the balcony. I didn't demo that. But it's that can be something that can be part of it. Um, but because we, we do carry around those ideas, such as biases, the prejudice, the image of certain other cultural groups. So blank is all, which are always like that. Men, women, baby boomers, young people, um, you know, certain ethnicity, whatever. And and that sometimes needs to be challenged more. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, I think one thing I that we've found is that you learn to take it less personally. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. more of the observer, mm -hmm. and watcher. Yes. Yeah, great. 
So a little similar to NLP, people have had some training in that, and some coach training programs, especially in Australia and the UK, really emphasize that. You know, the observer of self. Yeah. Thank you. Nick. I, I really like the metaphor too. Uh, I've always found that it's easy. Well, obviously, it's very easy for me to be on the balcony with other people in their lives and like, be like, here's exactly what's wrong with your life. <laughs> <laughs> I can see it. I can see it clearly, and you cannot. Because I'm on the balcony, and you're on the floor, and I can tell you exactly what's wrong with it because I'm on the balcony, and you're there, and you can't see it. And and to, to, to it, it's way more difficult to. to to get up on the balcony and, and look at your life, your life, and, and then and, I, and then I'll look at my life and I'm like, oh, well, those are the same problems I have that I tell them they have. And, uh, <laughs> and, and, uh, and, and when going through the actual exercise of it, of, of, of you know, what are, you're asking, what, what are the other things around your core purpose that, that, uh, that you're seeing from the balcony or whatever, it, uh, just to speak it out, like I said before in the first part, in the first uh, part, just to speak it out starts to like go, oh yeah, that's what, that's what's impeding me, that's what's helping me, that's what's things about me. Yes, and Helpful. so and great, and Nick, and I hope you heard yourself on this because you said that when you have been like up on the balcony with friends or whatever, you can tell them what's wrong, and your partner Betty didn't do that. She asked you some questions, and you came up with the aha on your own. So she's not saying, here's here's what's wrong and what you need to do. You're coming up with it yourself. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. it, oh, it's right, different from a friend. Yeah, I definitely think here's what's wrong with you. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's not so much like that. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, how this works, when I introduced this concept this last week with my UN client, this is our third appointment, is uh, he is in a, a new position. Somebody from another culture made this remark, which he thought was very critical of him. And when we got up on the balcony and looked at it, it was like, oh, well, maybe that was just that person being kind of <coughs> a brash American. <laughs> you know, maybe that didn't, I didn't have to take that all in and take it personally. You know, it might have been more about their communication style than it was about me. So you get those different perspectives. So balcony results, one advantage of getting up on the balcony and looking from different perspectives is that you're not jumping in and just going with your first conclusion, which can get you in trouble. And that you are accessing multiple perspectives and you can end up with clear communication and um, boundaries. All right. So managing self is a little bit like, a lot like emotional intelligence. Okay, so, you know, I will go back to, to Jane and, and play this out a little bit more. So Jane, the last time that we talked, you were, you know, starting to clear up things at, at home and in, in the community. It was still, you weren't sure what you were going to do with Susan. And Susan had kind of tossed you that, you know, thrown out that fishing hook, which frequently catches you of, you're the expert, you're the wise one, you know, why don't you just do it? And um, so let's talk about that. Yes, I tend to take the bait on that and then get myself overbooked. So that is a pattern of mine that's, uh, that's, that's a trigger. And then I end up being too stressed out and, and reactive. So um, I did catch myself that time and stayed out of it. I didn't get into that reactive trigger mode. I'm taking better care of myself, like I mentioned, walking with the puppy, doing the cooking, letting go of that responsibility in, in the community. Um, this, you know, I'm still a little uncertain about what to do about Susan. Uh, so, you know, we talked last time about coaching, and I've gotten the, the permission
information from the organization to, to check into that. Um, and we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. But I'm still not certain about Susan and, and how that's going to work out. But I, I feel like with your coaching or partnering together, I am taking better care of myself and doing things that energize me. I'm not taking that vision book that trigger and getting so reactive and wanting to scream and tear out my hair. The uncertainty, I know that's part of leadership. It's just still a little hard for me to handle. So I have to still continue to look at that and, um, and hope for the best. So let's do our final practice round. But first, do you have any questions about managing self? It's really being aware of your emotions, your own patterns, and catching, kind of catching yourself in the act and not falling into uh, the same hook or, or the same bait. And this is a huge thing with leaders, is handling uncertainty and ambiguity. So things, and like I said, in the centering piece, we live in this world of constant change. I used to think about it as, like, you would cross from one side of the river to another, and it would be done. And you'd have a while to be in that place and get your land legs back. And then, but now I see it as, like, the the cruise ship, where you're off for a few hours, and then you got to get back on again. And it's, it, there's really no, no time to adjust. So any questions about the managing self? Part of it is self-care. What are you doing to take care of yourself? How are you handling uncertainty? And then how are you managing your triggers and reactivity? So you know that certain things that people say to you are going to set you off. Certain people, what they say, what they do, you're going to have a reaction. So how do you handle that reaction? You want to take five minutes or maybe we'll shorten it to just three? What do you want to do on this round? It's your final round. It's like Final Jeopardy or something. <laughs> Is this little word called no? And that, that helps a lot to learn to say that so that you can make sure that you say, no, say no to the things that, that are um, taking your energy that you don't want. Yeah. So that you can say yes to the things that give you energy that you do want. Yeah. 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 I'm sorry. Yes. So uh, those asking and dwell, asking those questions of dwelling in the space of the answer is quite energizing in itself. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, especially the uncertainty part. It's like both of us got really present to how energized we are by our uncertainty. Fabulous. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Yes. And, and I can instead see. of looking at, you know, what's the challenge or the problem or the uncertainty, she'd say, what's the part of you <coughs> that will take you forward? So that part mm -hmm. in the dinosaur tail. And for me, when I get into that uncertainty space, instead of you know clinging to the railing ah, or tearing my hair out like Jean, it's that um, that adventurous spirit. So between those two polarities, I found that another option was jumping into the water and swimming with the dolphins. So you know you don't have to limit yourself to one extreme or the other, and you can find some way to enjoy and get excited that, that playfulness. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. That's beautiful. Yeah. Yes. <coughs> I was going to say that this is something before that, you know, you, you think about from time to time, but not necessarily on a daily basis. <coughs> and, and I, reflecting on these questions, feel like this is a daily thing. This is for the rest of your life. You know, this is a this is a journey, and these are questions that we have to be constantly asking ourselves, not just once in a great while, but every single day, because they are so impactful. Yes, yes, that's great. Yeah. So healthy habits, doing it all all the time. Yeah. And and this is what you know successful people do, 
and this is what companies hire for now. It's not so much, you know, do you know the basic skills? It's do you have, can you manage yourself in the workplace? Because the skills can be taught. Uh -huh. But this really takes some willingness on the individual's part. Yeah. Some individual, you know, and some discipline. So let's see how we did on the benefits. Increased energy, again, these three energizing steps. Decreased reactivity, increased acceptance of uncertainty, not biting the hook. No, there's the hook again. I'm not going to bite it this time. Yes. And so I know you all want to know what happened to Jane, right? <laughs> win, win, win. Even better, through Susan's assessment and coaching, Susan decided she was not a good fit for this position and this workplace and resigned. So Su Susan did, did see you? Or not no? me, another, another coach. One. Uh, so win, win, win. The team was happy, Jane was happy, Susan was happy. The organization benefited because they had a, a, a more productive workplace and that adds to the, the income and the prosperity, right? Win, win, win. And we're not over yet, but we're going to be moving into the demo. So I want to, while I have slides up, review. What we've done is master these three energizing steps to creating impactful and influential leadership. And it wasn't rocket science, was it? You can do it. Power of purpose, getting up on the balcony, managing self for positive results. Here's an invitation I asked you to see me as a resource, and I have this culturally competent credentialing, try saying that, mentor coaching group, for those of you that want to fully utilize your coaching gifts for maximum impact. And I only take seven so Thanks for trusting me and being willing to, to have some coaching with me. What would make this a great use of your time? Um, <laughs> I thought about it before I volunteered. Uh, <laughs> um, helping me feel like I'm making the right decision. Okay. So you have a decision coming up. Yes. And by the end, you want to feel more confident and clear about the decision. You want to feel like you're making the right decision. Yes. So. Being right about it means what for you? Um, well, I won't know if it's right or not for a few months. Okay. So it's, I think, um, I guess becoming comfortable with what I really want to do. Okay. So being comfortable with what you really want to do mm -hmm. is, is that, is that the final goal or is that, is it more the, the decision, or are they the same? I think it's probably the comfort with it. Okay. I think I know the decision I should make. Okay. But I, I'm still nervous about it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and I still have a few weeks to wibble wobble about it. So. Okay. Yeah. When you were I need to commit to the decision I want to make. Okay. So a few weeks to commit to the decision you want to make, and you want to feel more comfortable. I think you know the direction to go. Yes. You want to feel more comfortable. And when, just even when you were telling me about it, I felt some pressure. Like this feels like a really big decision. Is it? It is. Yeah. 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 Okay. So. Uh, but if it, if I make the wrong decision, I can make another one in three months. So I need to take the pressure off myself. Yeah. Congratulations <laughs> for that attitude. Yeah. 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 So you know, it feels like pressure. You know how to take the pressure off of yourself. Mm -hmm. By the end of the session, you want to feel more comfortable with the decision that you, you kind of already made. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how will we know that you're more comfortable with it? Um, <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> um, probably
but I will say that as much as I encourage other people to make decisions and stick with them, I tend to not want to make decisions in my own life. <laughs> 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 I can make really good logical decisions, but when it comes to decisions of um, the heart or risk or passion, I have to guess. Okay, and this is more risk or heart or passion. Um, this would be um, pursuing a passion with a short-term financial risk. Okay, all right. So that, <laughs> yeah. Uh, there was a shift there. Yeah. Yeah, like more right back into your head. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So tell tell me about this decision that you really kind of already made. Sure. Mm -hmm. Um so the decision that I had made was that I was going to leave my corporate role by the end of the month. Okay. And commit more to doing coaching full time as opposed to in my quote unquote spare time with two children. Yes. Um, <laughs> and um, the, the wrench that got thrown into the process was I got offered a consulting contract that is only three months long. Mm -hmm. And it's a 30 to 40 hour thing. Mm -hmm. um, so I could potentially, if I were to get the role, for sure I still have to interview, but I'm pretty confident with the previous employer. Okay. My theory was if I got them to commit that I would only work 30 hours, that it wasn't the 40 hours. Mm -hmm. If I could get them to commit that they would stick to 30 hours being my maximum, that then I would not be taking the financial risk right away, but I would also be enabling myself more time each <coughs> week to kind of slowly build up the business. Um, but when we talked about energizing, <laughs> my thought was I'm much more energized by just fully committing to it and spending 30 to 40 hours a week on the line of coaching that I want to develop that doesn't really exist right now and not take this wussy way out of doing what I've done pretty much every year for the last six years of taking the contracts that are handed to me that are good, nice, fun things to do, but not, they're all good and proactive and everything, but it's not the star that I really want. Yes. Yeah. So this is really big. I heard you say developing your, your own line of business mm -hmm. that doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. Not in the US. Mm -hmm. So this is this is your passion. Or it is, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when we talked about purpose, this uh, you know, tell me how this aligns with your yeah. purpose, your values, your vision. Uh, well it directly aligns with it. Um, you know, all of my coaching is always, I just really enjoy, I feel great purpose and reward in coaching. Um, but I've always been nervous about doing it full time because I didn't feel like I had a niche that was marketable, mm -hmm. that I could be everything to everyone and that meant I was nothing to anyone, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, but now that I have a specific niche that I feel very passionate about, that I know no one else is doing, I feel like the world's my oyster. Why would I not immediately act on it and go do it right now? Okay. So that sounds clear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what will it take for you to fully em embrace, feel comfortable, commit to this? It, winning the lottery. <laughs> <laughs> not caring about um, because it's not just, you know, taking a short-term tip for long-term prosperity, it's also spending money to do SEO and social marketing campaigns and things like that as well. So I will not only be reducing my income, but I will also be spending a lot more. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. So, yeah. so what, what will help you feel more comfortable about taking a financial risk? I hear this is really aligned with you for your, your passion, your mm -hmm. purpose, your values.
values, your vision? I think there's two things. One is three months of partial salary is not big in the grand scheme of things. Like taking a three month dip or four month or five month dip um, for a potential exponential revenue in the long run is a very small price to pay. And so I just need to kind of make the logic, yeah. allow myself to make the logic work that way. <laughs> and the energizing thing, I think, because part of the plan before I got offered this contract was, or before it was presented as an option, um, was that I was gonna stop working at three o'clock and spend the, you know, three to five and obviously till they go to bed with my kids, which that sounded very appealing to have a couple more hours a day with them in the summer. So I think that helps my overall well-being and will also make me a better person for pursuing my passion. So compared to your, you know, let's look at your comfort level when we first started talking with this about yeah. 10 minutes ago and your comfort level now. What, what if anything, has shifted? Um, <laughs> I'd say that probably saying it in front of a large group of people makes me feel more committed to it because now I have told all these people I'm going to do it. <laughs> so now I should. <laughs> and I already made the decision. It's just I had to tell 30 or 40 other people about my decision. Yeah, you had made your decision and saying it out loud to other people that care about you can really make a difference. And, and what I heard is that this is really big and you've looked at it from lots of different ways. You've looked at it from your heart and your and and financially, you know, different perspectives. And you still feel strongly about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you still feel called to do it. Yeah. And I think it's finally like the been wanting to do it for six years, but I've always had something handed to me that was pretty great. But that may be great. It's not ex it's not my excellence that I want. Yeah. Yeah. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.